Welcome to worship for Sunday, October 2nd, 2022, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. It is World Communion Sunday this weekend, and so we will celebrate communion today. If you have not gathered your elements of juice and bread or whatever you are using, go stop the video and do that now and uh, return ready for worshiping God on this wonderful day. Today there are four scripture passages that will be heard. The first are from Genesis. The first is Genesis chapter 7, the first five verses. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights. And every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. The second reading is from Genesis chapter 9, following the days of the flood. Verses 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The next reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We no longer know him in that way. So, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the one who knew no sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And the final reading is the very familiar two verses from John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Here end all of these readings. May God bless them to our understanding today and in the days ahead. So on October 1st, 
We started, or start, depending on when you're watching this. On October 1st, we start our 40 days of prayer as a congregation. If you missed it, or forgot it, or didn't know about it, it's not too late to join. Uh, October 1st and following, we will pray for 40 days together as a congregation. The first of the examples of 40 days in the Bible is this message, this scripture from Noah and the 40 days of rain bringing the flood. Of course, the result and the aftermath of that flood took much longer than 40 days to resolve. Noah and family were in the ark, inside the ark, for over a year. Moving on and rebuilding from that flood after they got out of the ark took much longer than that even. That year in the ark is, is all outlined between the two readings for today from Genesis uh, 7 and 9. So in between those two verses, the actual detailed outline of what happened uh, and how the progress happened during that year of flood is, is detailed out. 40 days of rain and flood, 150 days till the flood subsided and waters receded and the ark ran aground on land, uh, the waters having gone down that far. That's about five months from that point on. Uh, continuing from there, three months till the tops of the mountains and the trees were seen. Beyond that, two months before the raven and the dove were sent out to search for leaves showing that life had started again uh, in the world. And another two months beyond that, after the raven and the dove, till the ground was dry enough and God said, go out and leave the ark. When the family left the ark, the first thing Noah did was build an altar and thank God, probably for being out of the ark at last but for many things, uh, praising God and worshiping God. The first thing that God did was promise never again to destroy the earth by flood. Then our reading from chapter 9 continues after that uh, acknowledgement by both parties, by Noah and by God. In chapter 9, God established a covenant with Noah and all of Noah's descendants and all of the earth, all of the creatures of the earth. The rainbow became a sign of God's promise to offer grace always and always to be in relationship with humanity. The rainbow is a sign of God's promise to be in relationship. This is God's promise to love us no matter what always and forever. God extends love to the entire world. On this World Communion Sunday, we celebrate that entire world of God that belongs to God, whom God loves deeply. And we seek to bring peace in the world and unity by the grace of God. There are many many lessons in the story of Noah, uh, way more than one sermon can contain uh, and address in one short period of time. The story of Noah and the ark and the flood and so forth, uh, the story invites us and invites deep theological questions that we need to wrestle with as people of faith about uh, questions about how we understand truth in biblical witness, how we understand the Bible to be true, whether the story is myth or fact or ideology or something even more important by God's grace. Is it true? Yes, it's true. But what is the most important truth revealed? I would say not historic literalism. There is great truth in this story and all stories of the Bible. The story of Noah and the flood challenges us to reflect on the nature of sin and community. What does it mean to belong to community? What does it mean to sin? Corporate or individual consequences, 
for sin? How do our actions impact the world? The whole world, in fact. Uh, this story speaks also of the nature of God. Is God wrathful or loving? Or even to ask if God's nature might change. Look at that in the story. Uh, it, this story invites us to think about the call of humans, the call of humanity to obedience and trust. What does that mean for us? And responsibility to one another and to the wider world and to care of creation. So many things to think about in this story. It's a wonderful story that opens our imaginations from childhood forward. We remember thinking about Noah and the ark and the animals. It helps us to reach out to God and to reach out to the world. If we listen, if we keep listening uh, to this story beyond childhood, beyond the initial understanding and beyond rigid literalism, if we keep listening, God speaks. And God speaks new insights even to our understanding of the world today. Acknowledging all of that, I must uh, narrow the focus of today's sermon. Um, even with so much more important, uh, so much more that is important in this biblical story, we have to focus on just the bit we can handle today. I'm only going to talk today about insights that this uh, story has to share for us in the 40 days of prayer that we are experiencing as a congregation. I suggest three insights. First, patience. At the end of the 40 days, nothing happened immediately in this story. At the end of the 40 days, the rain stopped, but they were still in that ark. It was a year before they got out of the boat. For me, that says to our context, to this time, we must be patient and remain patient. Uh, even when the not obvious is happening in our lives. We, we just started the 40 days, or are about to start, depending on when you're watching this, we just started the 40 days. I can't expect the church to be transformed tomorrow. I can't even expect my prayer life to be changed yet. Honestly, as we trudge through these 40 days, there will be days when I think, perhaps you think, why am I doing this? What difference does it make? There may be days that you forget to pray or you, you skip the readings. Even at the end of our 40 days, we may not feel or see any difference. Patience. I will hope that my relationship with God will deepen during this time, but, but it may not be obvious. Uh, the church may grow in our uh, 40 days or through uh, what we think about during these 40 days. We may be inspired for the future. We may have wonderful ideas about how to move forward to serve God. But then again, we might not be able to see any immediate difference or realize any immediate change. Patience and persistence will be our motto. The praying is enough in and of itself. The turning to God, the listening to God, the relationship with God in Jesus Christ is indeed more than enough. Be patient. Even in these 40 days, as we wait for the Lord and trust in the Lord, as we pray together, as we pray in our own homes, be patient. My second insight uh, from this scripture of for, 40, for our 40 days and our journey of prayer, my second insight is promise. Both God and Noah make promises in this story. 
both before and after the 40 days, both make promises. Promises were made to trust God, to obey God. From God's side, to be with Noah and his family and to protect them, to offer a new beginning. At the end of the story, God offers a new promise from, from our scripture in chapter 9 that we read or heard. God says, I establish my covenant with you and every living creature. I talked about covenant a few weeks ago uh, in a sermon, not too long ago. Covenant is a promise of an ongoing relationship. In this case, between God and humanity. God says, I will bless you. I will love you. I will take care of you. I will be here for you. God says, you are my people. You belong to God forever, no matter what. You belong to God. The sign of that covenant, the sign of that promise, the sign of the relationship is that rainbow. Uh, the natural wonder of creation, the beauty, the mystery, the miracle of the rainbow. Whenever you see it, God says, remember. God says, I love you. You belong to God. Every time you see the rainbow, remember, God loves you. Further, scripture says that God will remember these promises. God will remember you and me and us and God's love for us. So that leads to the third insight that I have for these 40 days of prayer. Uh, patience, promise. On that day, on that mountain with Noah and his family and all of the animals of creation, on that day, God started over. God wiped the slate clean of all that had gone before, of all the mistakes, and God started again and allowed humanity to start again. That is really the point, the whole point of the Noah story. Whether it is literal or not, whatever you think about the destruction, the point of the story is that God makes all things new. God gives us new beginnings. God allows us to start over no matter where we are. God releases all the problems, all the mistakes, all the sins of the past, and God wipes them out. Always, God begins again and allows us to begin again with love, with belonging. God makes a new covenant promise because of God's old and permanent love. God loved the world so much, God still loves the world so very much that God comes in the grace of Jesus Christ to bring new life to all. The old is passed away. Behold, new life has begun, as our scripture says. God invites us into that new life in Jesus Christ. Every single day, every single moment, God invites us to new life. We all receive God's gift of grace each morning, and we move forward in the love of God together, always. And there are many signs of that promise, many reminders of God's grace. Yes, in the rainbow, but in other signs as well. And the surprising sign in the sky of after the storm, which is the rainbow, and the sun coming with that rainbow. But also, in other signs, everywhere you look, there are signs of God's grace, God's love. Open your eyes to God's promises for you, for all, of renewal, of life, of light, of love. Today, we receive signs of God's love in bread broken and cup poured out. These elements remind us of God's love, God's love in Jesus Christ given for all. 
they remind us of the sacrifice of Jesus to take away the sins of the world. They remind us of God's love lived in Jesus. Once again, to wipe away all the sin and offer new beginning, but this time not in a flood and not in destruction, but in grace and in love. Once again, we are cleared from destruction and offered new life in Jesus Christ. Once again, humanity may begin again, this time in you, in me, in us together, witnessing to God's grace in the world and sharing God's love in the world. It's a miracle every time we share communion, a miracle of God's presence, God's promise, God's blessing, God's hope for the world. It's a miracle. On World Communion Sunday, we embrace God's promise of a whole new world offered to all, peace on earth for all humanity. We also receive God's call to share the ministry of reconciliation for all, to work for peace for the entire world. Today, this weekend, for World Communion Sunday and celebration, people come from east and west and north and south, from city and country and town and village and rural area all over the world, from poverty and wealth, from ability and brokenness, from every race and every culture and every circumstance, people come into God's presence through Jesus Christ. People come today into God's presence to receive God's gifts and to celebrate this whole new wonderful world, this wonderful gift that God has created where all are one in Jesus Christ, where all belong to God. Thanks be to God for this day and every new day given to the glory of God. Amen. So if you have not gotten your elements yet, now is the time as we approach the table of Jesus Christ. On this week of World Communion Sunday, we celebrate Christians all over the world who gather to celebrate Jesus Christ. All over the world during this weekend at some point in these days, as time passes in different time zones, the faithful come to the table of Jesus. The faithful come from east and west and north and south to sit at table in the kingdom of God. Wherever Christians live, wherever believers are gathered together, wherever people praise God and worship together in big churches and tiny villages and beautiful cathedrals and thatched huts, people come to celebrate God. Christians gather, even in our homes, even alone with a video camera, we celebrate Jesus Christ and know that we are united and connected to everyone else everywhere in the world who is celebrating this World Communion Sunday together. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Let us celebrate this feast that Christ has prepared. Let us pray together. Gracious and eternal God, ruler of the universe and loving Lord of all, our, of all of our lives, we come to you this morning aware of your presence, your power in the world, aware of your spirit which seeks to unite all people of the world. We come grateful for your gifts to us and your love for us, and we ask you to help us extend that blessing to all people everywhere. We praise you for the wonderful diversity you have created for people of all shapes and sizes, all creeds and colors and cultures, and for the beauty of each life. We praise you for this world and its people. And we ask you to inspire us to break down barriers, to build bridges of understanding and compassion that all people may 
dwell together in unity as you have desired and inspired. Help us to open ourselves and our hearts to others and to become your community of love and peace. We thank you for your gifts to us, especially for your love for us as shown in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We praise you for your son, Jesus. We thank you that Jesus died for us and that you raised Jesus to rule the world. Now give us your spirit in the breaking of bread so that by your power we may be drawn together and made one with Jesus Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. As this cup is poured in unity, Move us to be united with people of faith wherever they may be. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and Savior of all the world, who taught us to pray together as we now pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this, remembering me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this remembering me. For every time you eat of this bread or drink of this cup, you proclaim the death of our Lord Jesus Christ until Christ comes again in glory. These indeed are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us share at your own pace, in your own home, the body of Christ, the bread of life. And the blood of Christ, the cup of hope for all. And now let us pray. Gracious God, with one bread, one cup, even across miles, you have united us. You have reminded us of our unity with people all over the world. Indeed, through your love in Jesus Christ, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Keep us strong in this conviction of unity in remembering your love for all of us, no matter how different we may seem. Remind us again and again and again that we are your people created in your image. Renew us in your spirit to build bridges of reconciliation and renewal. May our love be your love reaching out into the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now go out into the world to serve God and share Christ's peace in the world. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>